Renal biopsies are uh, done to diagnose medical renal conditions, to look for the activity of diseases like uh, lupus, to look for chronicity of diseases, to look for prognosis of conditions, and also in case of uh, transplantation, if there are any features of rejection or any infections like CMV, which is common in immunocompromised people, and also if there are any drug toxicities. So in order to know these or to identify these uh, conditions, we have to know how a, or what a normal kidney looks like. And this renal biopsy is taken by a radiologist or a nephrologist and they take a course of uh, tissue from the kidney and they submit it for light microscopy in formalin and uh, for fluorescence microscopy in uh, Michel's medium or in saline, normal saline. And if uh, electromicroscopy is required, uh, it is taken in glutaraldehyde. Usually the cores are around uh, 1.5 centimeters, and uh, the cores are uh, in the uh, scanner power. They look kind of like this, and even at this power, that is the scanner power, we can appreciate the globular structures, that is the glomeruli. And the other structure which we can easily identify at this power is the pinkish color that is basically the proximal convoluted tubule and this is H anti stain so it uh, proximal convoluted tubule appears very much pink or eosinophilic in the H anti stain and this is a, a PA stain which is much more darker staining compared to the H anti you can call a kind of magenta color and uh, it stains the basin membranes very well and another stain that helps uh, to stain the base membrane is the silver stains like JMS. Anyway, this is the PA stain and this is a glomer normal glomerulus that we are seeing. <laughs> and uh, in case of a normal glomerulus, uh, we can see that this is the Bowman's capsule which is very darkly stained by the PA stain. And here there is the nucleus, this is the nucleus of the parietal epithelial cells and this is the um, podocyte or the visceral epithelial cell, the nucleus of visceral epithelial cell or the podocyte and uh, this is the capillary loop and uh, this will be the base membrane of the capillary loops and inside the capillary loop we'll have the nucleus of the capillary loop, the cell with the nucleus basically and these capillary loops are supported by a stalk that is a mesangium. Mesangium has nucleus of its own or cells uh, of its own and also matrix. So mesangium is a supporting structure of the capillary loops. If there is any defect in the mesangium, the capillary loops will swell up or form aneurysms. So how these capillary loops are formed? They are formed by the branching of afferent arterioles. That is afferent arterioles, they come up from the interlobular arteries and uh, they they, they, uh, they form the art afferent arterioles and these afferent arterioles after entering the glomerulus they divide up into numerous uh, capillary loops and uh, these capillary loops later coalesce to form the afferent arteriole. In this image uh, it is not shown, uh, we can see further up uh, as the slides move on. Anyway what we see here is a normal glomerulus and uh, uh, this is the urinary space. So this is capillary loops. In capillary loops there will be blood and uh, the blood will be ultrafiltrated and the ultrafiltrated urine will be formed here. That is the urinary space. So basically that uh, area where this ultrafiltration occurs is this tiny or small area where there is uh, endothelial, capillary endothelium, the basin membrane and the podocyte with the foot process of the podocytes basically. So that is um, actually the glomerulus is a very, very beautiful structure or one of the most intricate structures in the human body uh, because such a small structure but it has so much of uh, happening, things happening within it and uh, even in the structure and also in the function because some so much of blood flows into it and it is really a wonder. Anyway, this is a glo normal glomerulus and um, diseases that can mimic a normal glomerulus is... Uh, uh, one that can present with a nephrotic syndrome is minimal change disease. It can look exactly like this in light microscopy and we may require electromicroscopy to look for or we require electromicroscopy to look for the effacement of the foot process of the uh, visceral epithelial cells or the podocytes. And another condition which can present with hematuria is uh, and look exactly like this is the thin basin membrane and if we do electromicroscopy we can see that the basin membranes are very much thin, thinner compared to the normal basin membrane thickening uh, so thickness so this is these are two conditions that can mimic a normal glomerulus 
then conditions uh, which can result from the abnormalities of all of these cell lines uh, that is uh, by itself a big topic but uh, to make uh, just to mention the parietal epithelial cell proliferation can form crescents uh, which we call the crescent glomerulitis uh, glomerulonephritis etc then um, podocyte damage can cause uh, podocytopathies uh, then uh, this uh, capillary loops by itself can have a uh, uh, means uh, immune deposits that is just below the epithelium uh, within the capillary uh, basin membranes or or uh, be or behind the <coughs> into <coughs> endothelial cells so immune complex depositions can occur and many patterns are there like mpg and pattern etc are there but um, that is too vast to go into right now anyway we'll go into the tubules uh, from this image so this is the pas and uh, in pas we can uh, easily identify the brush border like appearance of the proximal convoluted tubule so this is the proximal convoluted tubule that is uh, very much um, uh, pinkish or what you call a magenta stain in case of a PA stain anyway it stains very much uh, darkly and uh, if you look at the apical area it is with the brush border is uh, visible then um, even the apical part of the proximal convoluted tubule can form blebs like this blebbing of the uh, apical part so that is a proximal convoluted tubule uh, and this is the glomerulus so we'll go into another image and here we can see this is one arteriole this is another arteriole this is a continuation here somewhere that section is lost so it should have been continuous like this so this is one arteriole this is another arteriole and i believe this is the afferent arteriole for two reasons because the media is thicker compared to this that is one reason uh, afferent arteriole the media is uh, more thick thickened or uh, cell the cell layers are more than the afferent arterioles and also <clears throat> the afferent arteriole does not go much into the glomerular tuft they divide uh, just with uh, just after entering the bowman's capsule they divide up into the capillary loops and these capillary loops are supported by the mesangial cells anyway they see here there is uh, rbc's within the capillary loops and these capillary loops they coalesce to form the afferent arteriole and different arterial leaves the glomerulus and here there is a very interesting structure that we can see this is the distal convoluted tubule and this area where the distal convoluted tubule meets up the glomerular tuft is what you call the macula densa <coughs> so this is the macula densa of the uh, um, distal convoluted tubule and this is basically mesangium so this is outside the glomerulus so it's called extra glomerular uh, mesangium this is the intraglomerular mesangium basically both the mesangium are continuous with each other and um, this is the afferent arteriole i believe and uh, this whole thing is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus where this renin synthesis etc occurs so basically this is the extra glomerular mesangium this is the uh, macula densa an interesting structure and this in uh, this section we can see all of them the afferent the afferent the whole apparatus in between them and this is basically a chandy stain by the way the uh, stain before the previous one was ps i'll just show the ps stain again uh, to uh, if you want to appreciate the difference so this is a different color compared to a more pinkish color of the hnd stain this is the hnd stain and even the stain the PS, I'm uh, sorry, the proximal convoluted tubules are very, very uh, pinkish compared to the DCT. DCT is not that kind of a pink or the distal convoluted tubule. It is not very pink. The pinkish is the proximal convoluted tubule. And uh, this image uh, here we can basically this was a normal glomerulus. Another interesting finding is there. I have already told about the urinary space. So this is the vascular pole, by the way. This is the vascular pole because all the vessels come and go here. So this is the vascular pole. And this is the vascular pole. And opposite to it is the urinary pole. This is the urinary pole. And if you look, the Bowman's capsule here, it is going, 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 and uh, it is finally becoming the proximal convoluted tubule. So the urine that is formed here will flow into the proximal convoluted tubule which then goes as the loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct, etc. So here is 
uh, basically is the blind sack the whole apparatus is a blind sack because the urine is going up here here it is closed so this is the proximal conductor tubule and the parietal epithelial cells are quite continuous with them this is uh, again uh, lower power this was 40x and this is I think uh, 20x here we can very much differentiate between the proximal convoluted tubule and the other tubules which is much much lighter compared to the proximal tubules the proximal tubules are i repeat very much eosinophilic the other tubules the distal ones the loops uh, and all are much lighter lighter staining and uh, this is the normal glomerulus basically this is the interlobular art artery I don't think there is any arterial in this um, and by the way uh, in between these um, uh, tubules or the proximal conductor tubules there is uh, arteries artery um, PCT what do you call um, so PTC sorry PTC that is a uh, peritubular capillaries that is between the capillaries there are peritubular capillaries and uh, in normal condition the tubules if you look all of these images the tubules are back to back that is there is no space in between them that is the interstitium is very much uh, what you call negli negligible it is in normal conditions the tubules will be packed with each other the interstitium between them is not very much visible if there is any kind of in inflammation there will be edema that can separate out the tubules then there can fibrosis can be there which will separate out the tubules then there can be inflammation in this uh, interstitium and another thing that is present between the tubules is as i told uh, peritubular capillaries and this uh, tubule tubular capillaries are very much important uh, to assess the rejection as the antibody mediated rejection the c4 d will be staining them uh, strongly so this is how a normal uh, tubules looks like they are packed back to back without any space okay so this is a jms stain a silver stain john stain and uh, it is also a stain which is very good to stain the basal membranes and it will help us to diagnose uh, membranous nephropathy where we can see spikes uh, easily in this uh, in uh, in the stain then we can appreciate a double condors of the capillary loops uh, much better in the stain so this is the jms stain can have a look at the appearance how it is a normal glomerulus looks under the stain this is yet another image of the same thing and this is another image all right so this again uh, basically this is the normal histology basic things that we have to see vessels arterioles I, I don't think was there in this images but basically there are also arterioles and uh, this is the scanner power of the cortex and as of now what we have looked into everything was cortex so basically what we are looking is into the cortex uh, almost all the diseases are cortical not everything but almost all so this is how a cortex looks like with all the pinkish pct glomeruli etc and as we go further uh, this is the medulla and this is the, by the way this is the medullary rays that parallel appearing tubules that is the medullary rays this is the medulla and this is much deeper into the medulla medulla is where there is uh, collecting tubules and then there is uh, the thin loops the thin thin uh, loops of uh, the henley that is all in the deeper medulla and medulla is uh, one place the deeper medulla is one place uh, where the uh, there is vessels collecting duct and the thin loops of henley and it varies from species to species like in humans it is a different kind in rats it's a different kind and the variation in the arrangement of the tubules and the vessels in the deeper medulla that that uh, helps that organism to concentrate urine or it it depends or it 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 uh, is the main reason why there is a difference in the way or in the in the way these organisms um, concentrate urine like the ability to concentrate urine is mostly dependent on this area the deeper medulla the arrangement of the vessels in the vessels and the or the interrelationship between the vessels and the tubules in the deeper medulla i think uh, that's it that's it um, all of this was covered okay thank you